that's been overvalued for years and years and years. What, uh, what changed to make it, in your view, too overvalued now? Well, it was actually a combination of things. It wasn't just valuation. When we looked at our earnings preview, which came out this morning based on the data science work we do with the UBS Evidence Lab team, we're making a call that they're going to put up inline domestic subs and only a slight beat on international subs when they report Monday night. So this is both a short and a medium-term call that you're going to see less momentum in the business starting next week uh, that certainly post 117% move year to date is not exactly what's factored into expectation among investors right now. Do you think when you just look at old media, and, and I've done, I could do some annoying Netflix uh, comparisons. We used to do that at, at, at a totally different time when, when these companies didn't even have earnings and, and we'd look at, at those. But, you know, I've done it recently with Facebook. I mean, you can put together three of the most uh, well-known companies in the United States and you can still you can buy three of those companies for less than you can buy Facebook. There are some great media companies, you probably buy four or five of them and still not get to the market cap of, uh, of Netflix. But with the growth and, and the potential, how do you value it? Is it on subs? You don't do it on earnings per share, I know. We, we, we do it on a combination of out-year EBITDA and out-year free cash flow when they do start uh, generating free cash flow and discounting it back. But it was interesting uh, in talking to clients about the note, uh, we are pointing out that you are already paying 40 times 2022 EBITDA discounted back 15% a year over the next four years. So we think all the good news of mid-single-digit price increase, 20% plus revenue growth, and 2,000 basis points of margin expansion, you're already paying for that right now. Eric, based on your work on U.S. credit and debit card, you, you indicate that you believe that the churn, that, that, that subscribers are very stable here in the United States. And you also say that, that based on consumption patterns, it seems like um, there's been some weakening in the second quarter and that the third quarter pipeline looks pretty weak when it comes to new releases and reasons why people would want to tune in. Are you implying that perhaps that there could be increased churn in the United States because the pipeline is not as good? More just that the incremental growth might not come through to the way people think. So at the end of the day, what Netflix is, is they're investing in content. Successful content just uh, drives a successful subscriber momentum in the business. When content underperforms and they don't have hits, there's obviously less incentive for new people to sign up and possibly some incentive to churn off. We're not seeing any impact in churn, but historically when content's underperformed, we do worry about the forward subscriber momentum. Every subsequent season of a title in Q2 underperformed prior titles, whether it was 13 Reasons Why, Luke Cage, Arrested Development. We think that's a little bit of something on the worrying side that investors just need to focus on as to what that means for forward subscriber momentum. Yeah, I, I mean, and it gets more and more expensive too. And, and you. You know, studios, networks, everybody has a, has a cold streak. And I don't know how you just do it again and again and again. And then, you know, third tier actors at this point, if every single, you know, tech company is trying to put together content, producers, writers, actors, all their prices are going to be bid. I just, I just don't know how sustainable the, those multiples are, are Eric. And, and uh, it just seems like it's going to get more expensive and you're going to get less for it. Is that not right? I think that's fair. And, and one of the points we make in the note is, uh, the risk factors here, which is they still need access to the capital markets because they're not generating free cash flow. Competition for content is not going away. Competition for eyeballs and users is not going away. Apple, Google and YouTube, Facebook, you know, Amazon. Um, so when you have a stock that's moved as much as this has, you know, this yeah. was a stock below 200 in November. Uh, you've had a very big move off the bottom in this stock. Uh, we think you have to sort of factor some of those risks in, uh, and that's just less why is access to cash levels. a concern when you got a stock that's more than doubled over the past year? Well, they certainly could raise uh, cash via equity and debt. There's no doubt about that. But um, that's certainly you know, not something that's going to inert to the benefit of current equity holders. That's not a positive thing for the risk reward if they right. need to continue to raise money. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.